What's good YouTube, this is Mark. Today I'm going to show you guys how to customize your Photoshop workspace in a professional way. When you print in, when you keep printing in Photoshop, you get to some stage when you find out that Photoshop default workspace is no longer giving you what you want. At this point, you really have to switch your workspace and get into something that it's really going to be helpful to you well there are ways this which you can customize your workspace that it's really going to be cool for you but as an artist most artists usually have the way they set up their workspace well in this video i'm going to take you through two ways of which you can customize your workspace as an artist one it's taking a whole total control of your photoshop workspace that is telling what you will tell in Photoshop the things that you want to see in your workspace, and the other is just make use of make use of some Photoshop defaults and just make up your own workspace. So the first workspace I'm going to be taking you guys through is to set up the basic artistic workspace. Now the, the workspace I'm making use of now it's more like a professional workspace where you really tell Photoshop the things you do. That is, you take out some things and you leave some things in your workspace well we're going to first of all walk through this process now i have actually made use of this process we are going to be going through right now if you guys have watched most of my videos you get to see that i make use of these workspaces and actually i have made use of several workspaces which i really find out that they are not really making any sense for me so i have to switch to this last workspace which i am really going to be making use of so if you just open up photoshop this is what you are going to get a crazy workspace from Photoshop itself, like there is this workspace you start off from CC 2017 and above. Well, we don't really need all this stuff, so we just need to take away all this rubbish and start creating the workspace from scratch, which is the way we are really going to need the workspace. So, first, we don't need the length tab, I'm going to pull it out. We don't need the library, I'm going to pull it out. As an artist, you don't need all this for now. Let's bring that out. And this, you really don't need all these tabs. So, I'm going to close this close this close this and also close this now we are left with only the layers the property the history panel and so i'm going to take this out because we are going to bring it back later so now we are left with only the layers and the two bar so first now what i'm going to do i'm going to drag this two bar and take it all the way to the right i'm going to take it all the way to the right and i'm going to dock it right and now all you just have to do to dock your panel you just need to drag to a certain position and the moment you see the blue highlights you just release your mouse click and it's going to dock it into that position so first i'm going to dock it to bar right here now it all depends on you it's really based on your choice you can dock the two bar at this point or you can also dock the two bar at this point or you can just leave your two bar close to the side just like that but i always like my Photoshop tabs to be docked. So I'm going to dock the two bar right here so that it's going to be in that part. So now the next thing that I want to do now, customizing your workspace is not just really for you to customize your workspace, start dragging anything into your workspace. They call it customizing workspace because it is the workspace which you want to make yourself that you will be able to reach everything you want to use at ease without stressing yourself. So for me, the things I make use of mostly is the two palette layers the layers which is very important and i make use of my colors sometimes the swatches and the default color picker in photoshop and i make use of the brush panel and just the history panel these are all the things i make use of and this is exactly what i'm going to be adding up in this workspace so i have my layers at this part so what i want to add there now just only the layers so that everything is really going to be in a uniform way so all I just need to add here now is to add my colors because I really need my colors to be in a way, in a place where I can just easily reach them and pick those colors. So I'm gonna go, I'll go up to Windows and go up to Extension. Now I am making use of the Colorius 2.5 for Photoshop 2020. Now I guess I, I have to leave a link in the description where you guys are going to get these. But if I don't, definitely I will make in the future a tutorial in the future which you guys will be able to download this plugin and how you can install it in your own Photoshop. So this is the color picker that I'm making use of. But if you're making use of the default Photoshop color picker and you don't have any color picker extension in your Photoshop, all you just have to do, you just have to go down and 
bring out the default photoshop color picker that is available in photoshop so i'll go over to windows extension and i'm going to open up the colors color picker now you can see how it's open up wide right here so i don't need this right here i'm going to take that away from that part i'm going to bring it down to this part and oh my god sorry about that i'm going to bring it down to this part where i have my brushes and the color and right here i'm going to dock it right there so now you can see it's now fitting in that place so right here i have my layers and i have my colors now in case if you are making use of the color swatches because sometimes i always make use of the color swatches like most of you guys that have given out my color swatches too so most of the times if i make use of those color swatches i don't i don't have to go over up to, go up to windows and start looking for my color swatches every single time that i want to make use of the color swatches all i just have to do i'll just first of all find out the color swatches and bring it out right here once it's right here you can see i have some of my colors which i've already given to you guys so i don't need to start going up to color swatches again and start bringing them or every time I want to make use of them. So inside of this tab, you can see that we have so many items. You have the color, the swatches, the gradient, and the pattern. So all I need is just the swatches. So I'm going to drag out the swatches and add it up to this part. So I'm going to have my color picker and my color swatches. Now, next, since I have all these things set up, and now what I need most 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 which is very important it's my brush too because i don't have to start going over to windows or start right clicking when i need to select my brush and start bringing out my brush into photoshop and just start looking for a way to get my brushes to i need to add my brushes to this part so i will go over to windows and go over and look for the brush and i'm going to open up the brush now this includes the brush settings and the brushes itself which makes this brush panel to be very very big and i don't want to so what i'm going to do first i'm going to drag out the brush tab itself and put it that way then i'm going to drag out the brush settings and i'm going to close this because i don't really make use of that now if you want to configure your brush you can just hit on the f5 key on your keyboard and it's going to open up the brush settings panel for you so i'm going to drag this and i'm going to duck it at this point now this is so much big and i don't want it to be this big and i'm just going to drag it in make it this way so it's really going to be small now if you want to leave it this way fine you can just leave it this way but there is always one thing i normally add to my own workspace and that is the history panel which is very necessary for artists so i'll go over to windows um and from here i'm going to find the history panel and this is it i'm just going to click and drag and dock it above my brush panel so that everything is going to be on the same place now you have there are some other customization you have to do to your brush settings where i'm just going to walk you through right here now like having the brush tips at the left part of your brush now you just have to go over to this three dot menu right here click on that and hit on show brush tips and secondly what i don't really like is this recent brush of it's in i guess i just forget that recently and i joined and i just remove it and i did not remove it so i'm going to be removing it right now go over to that part and hit on what show recent brushes and i'm just going to uncheck on that so that my brush is really going to be this way and now one thing you really have to you really have to do it's organizing your brush because you don't want to just start going and start looking for your brush every single moment you want to make use of them so these are the brushes i make use of across all my paintings not really all of them but mostly but these are the regular brush i use in photoshop so i just have to arrange them in this part so i have the general brush if i want to do anything with the photoshop general brush i'll make use of that and if i want to do anything with this brush so i've got this set of brush which you can use to apply some kind of beauty effect to your artwork which we are certainly going to go into those brush in later tutorials and i have my sketching brush and i have my stylization brush and this brush i got from someone else then i have the hairbrush and my own photoshop brush so right here i don't need to go finding any kind of brush which i want to make use of again so i have everything right here it's really going to be easy for me to make use of now if you have done if you are done customizing the workspace the way you are going to need to be which i have already done customizing my own workspace like this all you have to do is just for you to save the workspace and how are you really going to save the workspace go over to windows workspace and come down to this file that say 
new workspace and it's going to open up the window for you now you have these options right here we say keyboard shortcuts menu and toolbar now we are going to go into that in the next workspace which we are going to customize so for now i'm just going to type my my workspace and hit on enter so now we'll go over to workspace again and I'll go over to I'll go over to works Windows Workspace Essential. And now this is going to be our current essential. I don't want this to be our current essential. So what I'm going what I'm going to do I'll go over to Windows Workspace and hit on Reset Essential. Now it's going to take us back to the default Photoshop workspace or the workspace that came along with Photoshop. So now that I want to select my workspace, so let's assume you are two people making use of this system and everybody has their own workspace. And for the very first time, you just customize your own workspace and you walk away. Coming back, you find a different workspace there and you want to go back. Now, if it did not save it, just which I've just showed you right now, you'll be able to get it right here. But the moment you just save your workspace, the moment you just save your workspace, you'll be able to get it right here. So now that I already saved the workspace and I have it right here as my workspace, I can just go ahead and click on that. And it's going to take me back into the workspace, which I have customized in. And I'm going to have all the whole workspace right here. Now, if you think this workspace is okay for you, you can just stop watching this tutorial right now and go right into your Photoshop and make use of this workspace. Now, if you check almost, uh, let's just say 50% of every artist make use of this workspace if you really get to see but most times most people don't really care about the workspace they use but if you get to see most people they prefer making use of this workspace most especially the right-handed users they prefer making use of this kind of a work space so now it's time for us to go into the second workspace in photoshop now this is really going to take a little bit of time because we have to go crazy in customizing this workspace so i will just go over to windows workspace essential the first so that we're really going to have of this right so first we are going to be coming back into this layer into this right part of it so now what we're going to do we are going to head over to this two bar now look think of this how many tools are present in photoshop there are so many tools over like 60 or even more than 60 but how many do you, do you really really use when you are painting well that is the question you're really going to ask yourself but for me i make use of most times the move to the selection to brush to and just few to where i don't really go over all the whole tools and now this is really messing up your tool palette or your tuba so let's assume you are making use of a smaller screen and that the tool palette is just filling up every part of your photoshop screen like the right part is filling up everywhere and you really don't have much space to do some things and what are you really going to do so i'm really going to show you guys how to customize this here too bad that it's really going to keep leave you with the important tools you are making use of so all you just have to do go over to edit preferences and i'm um, sorry edit and just hit on two bar now this window is going to open up at the right part you can see that we have extra tools and at the left part you can see that we have two bar now at this part this uh, on this this two bar tab this is all the all the tools present in photoshop it's exactly what we have right here everything that's right here it's what we have inside of these two bars. So now I'm going to check. All you have to do, check properly, and the tools you are not really making use of when you are painting, take them away from your two bar. So the artboard tool, I'm not making use of it. I can just leave the um, rectangle marker tool and the elliptical marker tool, but I don't really make use of all those stuff while I'm drawing. So I'm just going to take this one out, take this one out. And some people make use of the elliptical marker too. Like if you do make use of it, you can leave it. <coughs> you can leave it right there. And the magnetic lasso too, I don't use it. Object selection too for the photographers. Full selection too for the photographers. <coughs> and the magic one too, I don't make use of the magic one too. The crop too, I can just leave the crop too. Perspective too, no. Slides too, no. This, no. Frame two, I don't make use of it. I drop out so I can just keep that just in case, but it's not really necessary because when you select the brush tool, you can hold an odd and sample from your colors. But I'm just going to leave that color sample, sampler to no, ruler no, nose to no, count to no. 
and this tab is just practically for photographers so all this this tab this group is going out everything in this group is going out because it's, it's never ever useful in ads now you have to take note if you're into photography as well you don't need to take out everything you just need to keep the ones that are very very necessary to you now coming to this tab where we have the brush tool the pencil tool, the color replacement tool and the mixer brush no 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 i don't use this and i don't use this so those are the two tools that make it up in that part Plus stamp tools no and no i don't use them history brush we don't need this because we already have the history panel open so i'm going to take that away and i'm going to take this away eraser tool just in case which we can always switch between the brush tool and the eraser tool so i'm just going to take that away gradient tool hell no we don't make use of it paint bucket tool no there's no need of making use of the paint bucket tool when you have your alt and your backspace to fill in your colors and the blur tool i can just leave the blur tool and the smudge tool just for in case by but i make use of the blur, the blur tool a lot and sometimes the smudge tool but not really always so the dodge tool we don't need that burn tool no the sponge tool no now inside the pencil group i'm just going to remove the i'm just going to leave only the pencil because I make use of the pen tool a lot and I'm going to take away every other part. Now we have, we also have shortcuts which you can use to do some of all these stuff to just remove right here. And the type tool, I'm just going to leave the type tool the way it is. I'm just going to leave it that way. I'm not going to touch that. The part selection tool, no. Direction tool, no. And the shape tool, I'm going to leave it that way. And the hand tool, I'm going to take it away. The zoom tool, I'll take it away. And I'm just going to leave the rotate to now coming down to this last part all these items you make use of these are the buttons we even hardly click inside of photoshop so i'm just going to uncheck them leaving only this one which is your colors but if you make use of the colors you can just uncheck these that is if you want but that is certainly okay by me so i'm not going to be removing it right there so i'm going to leave that now this is what you're going to do next now once you've worked take out the tools you are not making use of if you notice everything they are what in group when you look at this part, you can see that we have a rectangle. And inside of that rectangle, we have these two tools inside of that rectangle. And you can see that we'll take away some tools. Now, when you look at this part where we have the rectangular marquee tool, as well, you can see right here, you can see that we have a little bit of a drop down arrow at the bottom of it, which is telling us that we still have an extra tool inside of that arrow, inside of that particular place. So we don't want that. We don't really want that. We want all these tools to be at ease where we can easily reach all these tools and just select them so to do that all you just have to do click and drag this and drop it now you split that for you separate this from this now when you look at this part you can see now that under the rectangular market so we don't have that arrow right there and the polygonal lasso so i'm just going to take it away i don't use that so we, are, we have the lasso to on its own separate layer we have the magic one to in its own group the crop to in its own group brush tool and the mixer brush tool i'm going to drag it out and for this i'm going to leave it in the same group this is also it's already on its own group and right here it's already on its own group now once you've done with all this stuff you are on setting all this stuff there is one thing you really need to do which is very very important because sometimes some kind of madness can go on in photoshop and you lose all the preferences of what you've done so far so what you have to do come down to this part and hit on save preset when you hit on save preset it's going to ask you to save the tools which you just practically create not too long ago so you can just type in your name and hit on save and it's going to save i already saved my own tool but i'm not really going to be saving that again so when you save that and if something happened and your tools reset you can just come down to this part and hit on load preset and it's going to open up then you double click on that and it's going to load the preset for you so once you've done with all resets and you just hit on done and now you have your customized two palettes here very very easy for you to make use of so there is one thing you need to do again now this time around is for you to assign a shortcut to the most two you make use of now you can see that we have we'll make use of the b key you can really see that it's only going to select the brush too and if you're the type that makes use of the mixer brush a lot we all know that the mixer brush has no shortcuts on its own so we just really have to map a shortcut to that mixer brush and every other tool you make use of like the smudge tool like most people make use of the smudge tool very well so just have to map a shortcut to 
all those tools. Now, to do that, all you just have to do go over to edit and then keyboard shortcut. I'm going to open up right here. Just click on. Oh, I actually missed that. I really can even click from this part. Just click on uh, tools, and it's good. From the drop down menu, just select tools, and it's going to bring back bring up all your tools. So remember, we've taken away some tools right here. So I'm just quickly go down and look for the mixer brush tool, which is right. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to assign something like N to it, and it's going to pick that as N. Then, if you're making use of the smudge tool, you just quickly look for the smudge tool. And you assign any particular name which you want, any particular key which you want to assign to it. Oh, I can't even find this much too. Okay, so here is it. You can just click on that and assign any shortcut key which you want to make use of. Well, I don't really make use of the smudge to that much, so I'm not going to be assigning any shortcut key to the smudge to. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit on OK. Now, this is really fine for me and I've got what I want. But there is something I'm going to show you at the ending of this video. So now it's time for us to work on the right part. So we don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need this. And neither do we need this i'm going to close everything right here and this part i'm just going to drag it out and i'm going to close this i'm going to bring out my layer spanner so i'll go over to windows again extension and my colors and i'm just going to drag it and then drag it to this bottom part and dock it right there so now i have my colors and my layers and i will go over to windows again and then swatches i'm going to drag the color swatches and i'm going to drop it right there so now this is what we are going to do this time around instead of dragging the toolbar over to this place we are going to add up something to this part to make our canvas stay in the middle that it's really going to be so much helpful and easy for us to just paint in the middle so to do that just go over to windows and then brushes drag the brushes out of there take away the brush settings and close that now drag the brush and drop it in that part now make it a little bit smaller just something to your own fit in the way you really like it so make it a little bit smaller and keep it away go over to windows and lastly the history panel and you click and you drag and drop it above so it's going to be there now if it's too small just Hover your mouse at the middle of the between the middle between the history panel and the brush panel. Then you're going to get this arrow, then click and drag down to make it look this way. So, now since you've done with all this stuff, this is how I have my own current workspace, and this is what I'm using to paint, which is so much easy for me. So, now you have less tools, ease of access. You can just click on any tools you like, and it's really going to be easy now. What I say, I want to show you guys if you have downloaded my brush pack, so you really don't need coming over to this part and start taking or start picking one tools or the other, except maybe you want to make use of the color picker too, which is very easy for you to make use of the shortcut to assess. Like if you open up my brush pack, you get to see at the right part we have each brush to assign to it, it automatically switch tools for you. So right now I'm selecting the move to. And if I select any of these, you can see it automatically switch over to the brush tool for me. And when I select this one, which is the mixer brush, and it's going to switch over to the mixer brush for me. And we have the smudge tool. When I click on that, it switch over to the smudge tool. And lastly, we have the eraser right here. When I click on the eraser, it will automatically switch over to the eraser for me. So I really don't need to stress myself trying to go through all these tools or trying to make use of one shortcut or the other and selecting any tools and lastly organize your brushes the way i showed you the first time just organize your brushes so that it's really going to be so much easier for you to assess your brushes so once you've done again go over to windows workspace and then new workspace and you can go ahead and save the workspace and anytime something go wrong you go back and recover your workspace so i'm just going to reset this workspace put it in motion go back and hit my 
workspace and this is what i am going to get as my workspace now there is something i couldn't show you guys if you have customized the workspace just like this and you input the shortcuts and so on when you want to save when you go over to windows hit on workspace and hit on new workspace make sure you check this button and this button the menus you did not customize the menus you did not take anything away neither do you add anything so you can just skip the menu but remember we change the shortcuts of the small of the mixer brush too and if you change the shortcut of the small too you can just keep that to yourself so it's, since we have the we have changed the shortcut of some tools right here you just have to input keyboard shortcut and toolbar so that it's going to have the toolbar setting but if it did not include this it's not really going to well i'm going to show you the difference of them now so right here we have these i have already saved my own workspace so i'm just going to cancel this but when you check this give it your name and hit on save so i'm going to cancel this and go over to windows workspace and then my workspace now you can see the toolbar that we did not save the toolbar of the other workspace that's why we're having this toolbar right here. if you can remember we did not customize the toolbar of the previous workspace so if i go over to windows workspace and then essential and i go over to windows again workspace reset essentials now the works the toolbar is not going to come back so I'll go over to what edit toolbar click on toolbar and hit on restore the default toolbar is going to come back to its default senses now when i go over to windows workspace and then mark painting the toolbar is going to return to the save toolbar which i have already customized so that is it my friend on how you can professionally customize your workspace as an artist in photoshop and if this video helped you don't forget to hit the subscribe button not just the subscribe button ring the bell icon so that you my friend don't miss any new tips and tricks i'll be posting every week see you guys in my next video